So we've already met planes in this playlist already when we were looking at the geometrical interpretation of the different ways that planes can intersect when we were looking at matrices. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is really start to investigate um, the vector equation. So firstly, the vector equation of a plane. Um, and then we're going to go into how we can get from that to the Cartesian form. Okay, so in a kind of similar way to how we've done it with lines. So what I need you to think about is I'm just going to draw on some kind of like mini axes here. Okay, because we don't we don't really need need them. Okay, but it's just kind of as a reference. And here is your plane. Okay, so here is your plane. Now, in much the same way as uh, we did with lines. Okay, what we need to describe, remember a ve the, the whole point of this is to find a way of describing how to get from the origin to any point on the plane. Much like we wanted to get from any point onto a line, this time to any point on that plane. So the first thing I want to do is get onto the plane. Okay, I need some way of getting onto the plane. So let's say that we've got some point A. And the consequence of that is that I can work out, doo -doo 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 -doo, I can use the position vector for A, so OA, there's the origin, to get onto the plane. Okay, that's the first thing. So currently, what we have is that R, which remember represents X, Y, Z in exactly the same way as it did for lines. So I'll pop that down here just to kind of as a reminder. So remember X, Y, Z, that's what R is. We've so far managed to get from the origin onto the plane because we know some point that is on the line, on the plane rather. Okay? Right. Now what we need uh, is a way of moving around the plane. Okay, so let's say we know another point that is on the plane. Let's say that this is point B. I can work out the direction vector AB. Okay, and what that will do is it will allow me to travel along that line. So if I wanted to get to this point, for example, halfway along, I could do OA plus a half of AB, and I would get to that point on the plane. Okay, so I want any multiple, so let's say lambda lots of AB. Okay, now that's not good enough because all that will do is it will allow me to get onto any point that is on that line. Okay, but not off the line somewhere else on the plane. So what I need is another direction vector that, is, um, that isn't parallel to AB. Okay, so I just need another uh, point. So if I could find another point on the plane, let's call that C, and then I could work out, didn't do that very well, did I? <laughs> I could work out the vector AC. Okay, so that was AB. That was AC. I could work out the vector AC, and then I could use multiples of that to get to any point that's on the plane. So it might be, for example, I want to get uh, here that's on the plane. And what I need to do is start at the origin, and I go to A, and then I go halfway along AB, so one half times AB, and then one half times AC and then I'm there. Okay, so I need AC to be non-parallel to AB. And therefore, as long as A, B and C lie on the plane, this would be the vector form, the vector equation of the plane. Okay, now in general terms, um, the way that we often write this is something like r is equal to a plus lambda, and we could use s, plus mu t, for example. 
Okay, so this is a position vector for a point on the plane. And these are non-parallel direction vectors. Okay, that lie on the plane. Okay, or parallel or parallel to the plane. Okay. So that is the form for a vector equation for a plane. Now, you haven't met that before. You've met the Cartesian equation for a plane. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at an example of being able to find the vector equation of a plane. Uh, and then we're going to develop this into, right, can we then use that to get to the Cartesian equation of the plane?